Right, hi everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another WKS podcast. This time I'm with uh, a guy called Tim Holhouse. How are you doing? I'm good, yeah, doing well. Brilliant. Thank you. Superb, superb. Would you like to sort of tell the viewers a bit about sort of where, where it all started for you musically? So, uh, oh, way, way back in, uh, I should take my glasses off because it's sort of shining and reflecting. Um, yeah, so it started way back, oh, 30 odd years ago now, I guess. A uh, 14 year old kid who joined a punk band as a bass player. I only had two strings on my bass guitar. Um, and uh, a lot of enthusiasm and not very much talent okay. <laughs> uh, at the time. But we were a terrible punk pop band and we were sort of, well, not even punk pop. It was kind of sort of grunge meets Green Day. It was like, what we could figure out to play that we could actually play easily enough because we were actually terrible. Our drummer was really good, but the rest mm. of us were just awful. <laughs> okay, fair play. So what, then, what sort of age are there you're looking at? Uh, sort of 14. So that was okay. back in the, uh, the early 90s because um, right. I'm in my mid 40s now. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess from there then I did lots of different other style bands. I did a um after that we did i was in a sort of i guess kind of indie rock band kind of like the pixies ish sort of stuff meets Britpop. we started out sounding a bit like the pixies and then much to my disgust the guitarist whose band it was and that was the first time i sang uh the guitarist who was the drummer in the punk band previous uh, decided he got into Britpop pop right. and wanted to make us a brit pop band and we sort of yeah emi demos and stuff like that I uh, got completely disillusioned with working with major labels um, and then went like into instrumental bands, hardcore punk bands, uh, sludge metal bands. And then about 15 years ago, I um, sort of became a solo act and have done since. Okay. So, and yeah, in the last yeah, 15 years or so, I've made it my career. And I think, yeah, maybe 16 years ago, I think, was wow. my, my solo album came out. Superb, superb. So um what what music's out there then uh from yourself uh there's lots of it if anybody <laughs> where to start really uh, i've done about 17 albums so if you wow. go on to timholehouse.com i've got everything listed up there but i've done everything from like um straight up just acoustic albums uh bluesy stuff full band stuff stuff with like string sections and during lockdown, I even I did a trip hop, an electronic album. So I've done trip hop um, for a mental health charity, which I did during lockdown. Yeah. So I'm one of those acts that just doesn't really stick to the plan. Just okay. like don't don't ever expect any, each album to sound exactly like the last one. I mean, yeah, okay. yeah, no, <laughs> fair play, yeah, fair play. So if I wanted to get a, um, an album that sort of gets the essence of Tim Holhouse. Would you, you know, could you recommend one of your albums? Oh, crumbs, the essence, uh, I guess. I mean, uh, there was a best of album actually coming out <laughs> later okay. on in the year, weirdly really? enough, which actually has like um, 10 years worth of, of stuff. I guess the first one that I'm really proud of is Grit, and that's more of a band album. That's got like fuzzed up guitars. It's kind of bluesy. Somewhere along the lines of Tom Waits meets uh, Captain Beefheart, sort of okay. meets C6 Steve. And then I did an acoustic album, Fighter, after that, which, which is like kind of definitely that era. So more recently, my, I guess my latest album, other than the trip hop album, it's an album called Come, and that's got like string sections on. And I'm really proud of it. It was like the big like budget widescreen album mm. that I did. Um, and it took me like five years to save up to be able to even afford to be able to record it and all the mm -hmm. session musicians. And I still love that one. So that's the one I kind of hope everybody buys. But we okay. were supposed to be touring it. It came out like November, end of November 2019. Mm. And I was touring to support it in 2020. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So apart from apart from the obvious sort of thing in, in lockdown, you know, the, the sort of isolation maybe and, you know, not performing. Um, did you find uh, songwriting? Did you were you more prolific or, or, or did it sort of cut for you? Uh, I'm actually horrendously prolific as it is. But um, yeah, I did nine albums and wrote a book. 
Bloody hell. So, <laughs> um, so that's quite a lot, I think, because of the sort of general sort of look on people's faces when I go, oh, yeah, I did, I did about nine albums. Yeah. And, uh, um, do, and I've do you record I, all this at home or do you go to a studio or how? You know? uh, well, yeah, currently I'm in my... So um, I have done some stuff in a studio, um, but I, I'm a, I actually studied sound engineering at university. Okay. So I know enough to be able to do it myself. Um, actually, one of my projects in lockdown was actually getting the studio room sorted because we mm. had the spare room. As you can see, we haven't wallpapered or um, put any soundproofing behind me. Actually, there is some soundproofing around in here. Um, but yeah, I, I sort of turned the spare room into a little studio room so mm. I could work on it. And I've got some bits that I needed, like at decent monitors, so I wasn't mixing with headphones anymore. Yeah, yeah. Little things like that. So. Um, yeah, I've done a lot at home. In fact, I joined the th a thing called Patreon because there are obviously no gigs, no no way to make any money. And I joined Patreon. Um, so I've been recording like an album demo a month. So all okay. of the songs that I've written, putting right. them together with my Patrons and stuff. So, so you, you find songwriting uh, easy then, do you? Or um, I, I do, yeah. I, I've, I've just, I think I've just got a lot of ideas in my head. Mm. I'm bipolar, so um, right. I kind of have okay. to keep busy. Yeah. Otherwise, I get really depressed. And I've definitely, I mean, it's why I did uh, the trip hop album for mental health, a couple of mental health charities, uh, mm. was because you know I'm bipolar and music's helped me so much. And it was just a small way for me to to give back. Super. Um, um, so I, I chose a couple of mental health charities. One's uh, run by a friend of mine in Chatham, my friend Abby, who is probably the one, one of the most awesome human beings I've ever met. Um, even when the center isn't open, she'll, you know, if somebody's got problems, she would Zoom meeting with them or uh, she would, she, like in normal times, she would have them over at her house. You know, it could be like three in the morning and they just yeah. come over, I'll chat. And she's an incredible human being. Yeah. And she's, not only does that she plays in a couple of bands mm. uh, she puts on shows she lives above a venue called poco loco in chatham and she puts on shows and and uh, i've seen i've seen bands like dithering loading in the gear and abby she's only this sort of tiny little american girl just lifting up a giant almost bass amp and going come on let's get this gig started so incredible human being wonderful absolutely wonderful so so where can where can uh, people get hold of your you know the albums? Uh, right, so uh, as I say, timholehouse.com or, t or if you look me up on Bandcamp, it's Tim Holehouse. I'm also on a label called R Real Records, and actually the mental health charity one is on the record label because they dealt with they deal with a lot of my stuff. Mm. So it's A A A H H exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark real records <laughs> and okay. i think the website is i will just check because i've got it on my phone but ian at real records is one of the best people in the world who really is yeah it's uh real records dot bandcamp dot com okay. and he's got most of my stuff on there actually superb absolutely mm. superb so coming out of lockdown then have you got anything gig wise lined up yet or are you holding back i have already played three. Oh, get on Brilliant. um so i played on tuesday i did a, I did some sound art for a performance art piece that was invite only uh in a big in fulham town hall and then friday i played at a skate bar in shepherd's bush I completely forgot how, I don't know where you are, but uh, I completely forgot where, how London works. Okay, yeah. I'm miles <laughs> away. I'm, d I'm down the other end of the country in Cornwall. Oh, Cornwall. Oh, yeah. lovely. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, hopefully planning to get down to Cornwall in September. I'm trying nice. to figure out what's opening up in Cornwall. Me and my friend right. AJ Simmons are going to okay. be touring down in the West Country. AJ's in uh, the band Wonk Unit. I don't right. know them. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if you get, because I'm right down in Penzance, so if you oh, right. if you get down yeah. this way somewhere, then I'd love to come and see you. Ah, yes, my friend, uh, I played in, uh, I've played in the studio bar. Studio think, bar, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the classic uh, down, yeah. 
and um oh what's his name uh from Di- was it dice spangle do you know that dice spangle yeah 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 uh one of the chaps from that band was trying to get me there before uh, right some, something I'll went make... wrong and we were gonna try it was play there was something about a chip bar complaining about something called the farmer's art uh, farmer's, farmer's arms yeah that's my local farmer's mate arms. yeah perfect yeah yeah so hopefully try and oh that'd another. be brilliant that'd be brilliant Shoot to see you down there can, yeah yeah, Superb. my friend Craig Matthews also lives in Penzance as well. Okay, so, lovely. Um, and that, yeah, no, I like I like the Cornwall scene. There's a there's a there's a good. I've met uh, Simon from Rash Decisions as well. I did his podcast, the yeah yeah thing, thing and stuff. So brilliant. I like all that crew. Um, hopefully, try and get to Falmouth again as well. Yeah, yeah. Hillbilly or Jacob's Ladder. I, I, I like. I like hitting Cornwall. It's always good. good. That's superb. That is superb. So, you know, have you have you got any more definite gigs up where you are in the next month uh, or so? Yes, I've got two this weekend. I've got one on Sunday, which is the Bird's Nest Nestival, uh, with my friend Eva Supertramp. And um, I think there's loads of other acts, but I know Eva's playing. Mm. And I've, I'm doing a, another art thing i get asked to do these art soundscape things sometimes so i just seem to have been asked to do a couple in a row so um mm. doing an art soundscape on monday which will be quite interesting so i uh, i've no idea what to ever ever to expect with these these yeah. these art ones <laughs> they're always yeah. quite interesting exciting yeah mm. so <clears throat> what sort of uh other musicians do you do you admire then oh so many um in fact, actually, two weeks in two weeks time, I'm play, um, uh, doing a show with my friend Baba Luck. I don't know if you know Baba. Mm, not heard um, the name, fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely love Baba. Uh, used to be in the band King Prawn. Um, okay. since, um, I prefer his solo stuff, to be honest. I think absolutely amazing. Baba, um, oh, so many. Uh, I had a bit of a moment at Rebellion Festival when Greg from Bad Religion watched me. I'm a huge okay. Bad Religion fan. I like sort of all the stuff like Black Flag, Minor Threats, Bad Brains. Um, mm. Oh, there's so much stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I just, I like, I just, I'm just a massive music fan. And I love when I'm surprised because, um, like, one of the things at Rebellion I went to see was uh, an older band, Ruts DC. Okay, yeah. And all I knew was Babylon is Burning. And that's literally all I went to see. I was like, I want to see that song because I, I really like that song. Yeah. They were incredible. Yeah. Like, yeah. like high that. energy. Yeah, like for the age as well. Yeah, I was yeah. like, bloody yeah. hell. I was like, how are they how are they doing that? Like and the songs were they weren't just that one song. There were no. so many other good songs. There was like other ones I recognized as well. I was like, oh my god. Brilliant. There's so much stuff, great music out there. And I I always just say there's just good music and bad music. Like mm. and I've got friends who make music that I just admire and um stuff so yeah um, so if you could if you could open up for any artist then past or present who would you go for oh oh there's probably loads but just give me one yeah. one stab at one ah uh, because i've already opened up for steve ignorant from crass so i've already done that nice. one. That, was, that, nice. that was a bit of a dream come true <clears throat> um oh god ah uh, I mean, my, my favourite band, one of my favourite bands are a band called Godspeed You Black Emperor. I play completely different music to them, but I absolutely love Godspeed You Black Emperor. And I would so admire to open up for Godspeed. Actually, on yeah. the tour before I got sort of everything got shut down, I, I played in Montreal. And the drummer from Godspeed You Black Emperor uh, does a project with my friend Eric, who was also playing, and he was there chatting to me and I was like I totally recognize this guy but there's like eight of them in God's Fiji Black Emperor so I'm like no maybe it isn't maybe it isn't and then he said oh yeah yeah and he mentioned something about God's I said oh I love that band he's like yeah. oh I play drums in that band sometimes yeah Brilliant. <laughs> I was like oh my god <laughs> superb superb I, got a bit starstruck. I get starstruck to starstruck to some of the probably the strangest people another mm. one would probably be like PJ Harvey or something like that mm. um, brilliant uh, fellow uh, fellow west country uh, artist mm. so I, i'm actually born i was actually born in dorset so i'm a kind of a west country guy okay <laughs> nice yeah i don't suppose you'd say that to a cornish person but there you go you know what i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's cool yeah, man it's, it's cool. like it's, it's it's like it's it's like the, the whole northern thing isn't it it's just like uh, 
was it Phil Jupiter said he moved up to Scotland so he could call he could call Northerners Southerners. Southerners, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a funny old thing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it, it's it, like sorry, yeah, mate, go on. not not West enough being <laughs> Dorset. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So, what is it? What is it you 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 know you like most about being an artist then? Um. Well, I mean, I, I, I touched on the bipolar thing. So, I mean, that kind of the, the creativity and being able to create is such a big part of my life. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it is really good for my mental health. Um, but yeah, I mean, the freedom to do the thing I love and I do it for a living, which is yeah. crazy to think that I, I yeah. feel so lucky and so blessed that, that I am doing that. I yeah I just love creating I love meeting people that's why I'm really so happy to be back doing live shows it's like just seeing yeah. people like having a Friday night even a guy I never met just came up to me bought a CD and then we ended up chatting he bought me far too many drinks um, <laughs> and it was just like a wonderful experience again and yeah. I haven't had that for like a good time where just somebody I've never, I don't know, just like, yeah, yeah. I love your music, I really connect with it. That, that, that feeling. Brilliant. Absolutely mm. brilliant. Brilliant. So what would you be doing if, it, you know, um, sort of like career wise, if it wasn't for music then, you know, where do you think you'd have ended up? Ooh, well, I was working at the PRS about 15 odd years ago, performing rights society. So I was working in a music -y type job but I've done everything from like, you know, I've done PR jobs and stuff, but then I've also done like non office work. I've done, I've been a bin man. I've been a, a postman, you name it. I've probably, I've cooked, I've done some chef work. So, you know, maybe I'd be a chef or something. I right. don't know. I do enjoy cooking. Actually, that's the one thing that the lockdown has brought because I'm usually all, always away on tour. I'm, not cooking for myself i'm either like buying takeout or um somebody's cooked for me so i'm not actually cooking for myself and mm. i love cooking so my partner's been sort of treated to all like my dishes that i know and <laughs> stuff fantastic so, absolutely fantastic <laughs> right then so uh I'm gonna go a good final question everybody yep. gets it this one so um is there anybody you'd like to thank for you being here musically now Oh, oh, so many people to thank. My friend Old Seed, um, so for the touring thing, certainly, my friend Old Seed was a huge influence on me. Brought me over to Europe for the first time. Uh, Craig, he's one of the most sort of brilliant songwriters that doesn't, like, he's so humble and doesn't mm. shout about it, and he's just an incredible songwriter. Such a nice guy. He brought, he's a Canadian guy. And he brought me over to mainland Europe. I, I took him around the UK. Uh, he's from Winnipeg in Canada, but he lives in Berlin now. But he's been living in Germany for like years and years. He was he was a huge influence on the whole touring mm. thing. My friends, the USA is a monster. Uh, a band from uh, New York who now live all over the place. But uh, I did my first US tour with them. They sort of taught me the ropes as well. So it was a lot of stuff like that. Um, my mum for buying me a bass guitar, even though that she knew it was going to be a really annoying noise. <laughs> um, yeah, there's been so many along the way who've like inspired me, influenced me, friends, like my friend Vincent Sleggers, who's an incredible musician, who's um, just like been there for me mm. every time I've, we've toured together and he's good. And every time we've toured together, there's always hilarious, things like he got a tattoo at like in the middle of the night after a show on his leg by a guy who'd only been being a tattooist for about a week and <laughs> the guy was really drunk so the next day he was limping oh dear oh, and it looked like a toddler had drawn it on his leg it looked like a toddler had drawn a felt it it was supposed to be a, a skull skull with a snake coming out but it looked like a an app a, a, a balloon with a worm or something <laughs> um, oh dear, there's so dear. many people i've got to thank for for ian at our real records of course i should thank especially he's been incredible like without ian i don't know what i'd have done um just takes care of all the sort of record side of things the 
like he's a really good mate as well and puts me on shows and just uh, Ian I think during lockdown probably had a he was on furlough and I think he had me Jake Martin Heartwork and various other members of his his record label messaging him every day like I'm bored oh let's talk to Ian <laughs> oh I want to release this on this format and he's like yeah he's great so um, the guys at Pink Lemonade Records in Canada also thank them. Uh, Malcolm Tent, uh, I don't know if you know Malcolm Tent. No, no. the bass player in the band Anti Scene. He also does solo stuff. He runs a record label called TPOS Records, and he uh, he had one Gigi Allen on his record label. Right. If you've heard of Gigi Allen, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. Nice. My best of album is coming out on his label. It's actually a sort of catch up for the states. And the uh, the release before it is a Gigi album record. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it was so bizarre to think that I'm label mates with that weirdo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Look, yeah, uh, so, so, yeah. yeah, Tim, look, thank you so much for the time and the interview. Absolutely thank brilliant. You so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And and it's good luck with everything. And hopefully yeah. we'll we'll see you. We'll get to see you down here in Penzance. Yeah, I should get in touch with the Dice Bangle guys. Hopefully in September, yeah, yeah. We'll get the Go farmers and and uh, yeah, sort of play a show. Yeah, it's it's weird to think, isn't it? Shows yeah. are happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you speak when you speak to anyone from Dice Bangle, tell them to uh, you know I've been nagging them for about a year and a half now for an interview. But they're right, so yeah. slack when it comes to it. But nag them. <laughs> no, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, mate, you take of, care. Yeah, I think it was like the yeah. uh it was uh, oh god, who was it? Uh, it was um yellow yellow something. Oh god. Brain. It was those guys that got me in touch with Dice Bangle, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, mate. Well have a have a, a good Come one on. and, and take care. Yeah, you take care too. Cheers. Cheers.